so the four hours of c programming and the advanced concepts of c programming is going to give you the num numerous hello guys how are you all so hope you are finding our classes interesting so hope you are finding our contents a useful and something to learn out of it so this class is going to be the last class of sap isu basics after this class we will be putting more advanced concepts of sap isu so hope you will find th those classes as well the more interesting and more useful with that there is another announcement there is another series that we are going to come up with which is c programming so the four hours of c programming and the advanced concepts of c programming is going to give you the num numerous knowledge which is going to help you or your friends or your colleagues those who are in college or or starting their career immensely a lot so please do watch out all of our classes regularly and keep sharing keep commenting keep liking our classes thank you let's start so hi uh last time we discussed about how to create the master data then we understand how to create the billing master data then we understand how to create the parameter records portions mru and how to create the scheduling so all this stuff we included at the installation level now today's topic is billing process so the rate category is at the place the scheduling is at the place so we are coming to the processes what are the processes we are taking to create a invoice now if we understand the high level business process in sap isu ccs you can see we have a model called metering billing uh, fica or account receivable customer services and we have crm which is also part of customer services integrated to the isu system for reporting we have a separate system called bw okay business warehouse or sometimes it's called bob j okay business objects right so bw or bob j b i bob j so that is for the reporting now this reporting system getting the initial data from the core isu system so in core isu system we have processes related to the metering and the first process what we do that is determination of the metering reading route and scheduling so meter read route okay as i mentioned we are integrating the uh, street route through the organizational structure or postal structure and that need to be linked to your connection object right so in connection object we are giving a address and that address need to be linked to the uh, postal structure and that give us the meter reading routes now meter reading routes map to the mru so we create a mru okay that mru is holding number of customers now that mru need some scheduling for which period we need to take the meter reading so that scheduling will link to uh, mrus so that is called scheduling so once we allocated the scheduling to the mru the first thing we need to do create the meter reading request or meter reading order we can say so mro so we'll create the meter reading order once we get the meter reading order we need to collect the meter reading so that is called the perform the meter reading so now these days the spot billing machines are not there uh, these days the smart meters are there but before in, in, during the uh, means before some years the spot billing machines are there and people go uh, home to home and they are collecting the meter reading now when they collect the meter reading they have the meter reading order in that smart billing machine then only for that period that person can enter the meter reading 
okay and once they will get the meter reading we'll upload into the system so that's how we do the perform the meter reading once the meter reading is uh, performed we need to check the validation of the meter reading right so you can see here uh, we need to check the validation so uh, when we do the validation we check majorly three things okay first the actual meter reading whether it is correct or not if it is not correct we need to correct the meter reading if some places the meter reading is not captured okay so we put the estimated meter reading okay in some cases when the meter reading cannot be estimated we do the calculation for the estimation estimated meter reading okay after these two things sometimes it happen that the meter reading which we capture that is more than expected or less than expected that means that is a plausible uh, not a plausible meter reading we need to make that plausible so we make that plausible to become uh, billing relevant right so once the meter reading enter your meter reading order convert to bill order okay now your meter reading order converted to bill order so utilize the mr to calculate the consumption bill so now it is a bill order so we move that to create a billing document capture the fees and charges for the customer so we do create a billing document and once we create the billing document that billing document need to be posted and the taxes and the areas need to be added so we go to generate the invoicing document for the customer okay once we generate the invoicing document then finally we go for the printing so we need to print that invoicing document once this printing happened then we deliver that okay so uh, nowadays there are other interfaces we are using to deliver the invoicing document like uh, over mobile over emails and sometime through messages so for that we may use a different kind of uh, system but the final output will get from the invoicing document right once the invoicing document is available for the customer uh, the data move to the uh, contract receivable right that is collection uh, then we put these payment receiving processes like if some customer put direct debit from the banks so that means the amount is open for that customer and it will auto debited to the uh, uh, auto debited and the open item need to be closed okay or they can directly walk in and pay somewhere right if all the payment is well and good that is good so the open item is closed the posting is balanced but if it is not then what we need to do we need to take the actions for the non paying customers okay how we get this non paying customer details through dunning process so probably the dunning process is scheduled every night and from there we can understand who are the non paying customer we need to generate the uh, the report for them and we need to send the latest for them to for the payments okay now all this thing we need to maintain in a report we call them credit profile report and where we can understand how much money collected from the customers okay once the payment happen invoice happen everything is done but there may be some queries from the customer end now to to answer those queries the real work started for the customer services right so the customer give the complaint the complaint may be anything related to the work request Just related be any maintenance required, or maybe related to your invoices. So if any amount is like not acceptable by the customer, in that case, they send a query. The queries again, query or complaint may be in different format. Mostly it is in a call format. Sometimes it is on emails as well. Once the query arrived, the customer services people need to generate. Okay, which is again linked to the plant maintenance okay so once the work order is released we need to understand the cost of the work 
okay and once the work is done we need to generate one uh, sd bill for that uh, work and we need to allocate that amount to the invoices for the next month right and appropriate actions and uh, details need to be provided to the customers so that is the role of the customer services mm -hmm. okay now all this stuff is done but still we need to do marketing and campaigning okay marketing and campaigning like there are new products new products means mostly it is the new rate category in isu so new products are introduced into the system which has their own tariff and structures so those things need to be available for the customers information now those things can be done through the crm so like you know there are a lot of crm sap crm is there then salesforce is there so those crm stuff will do a campaign for your product okay and whatever you are doing like how many invoices generated how many billing order generated how much amount collected how many customer complaint come and we closed uh, what is the result of your campaign? All this information go to the, or captured by the BW system to give you reports, okay? So that is the whole structure of your uh, processes. It is called order to cash process. Well, so let's move to check what is exactly the billing process within that, right? So as I mentioned, we have first process is called create the meter reading order. We created the meter reading order that move and then we enter the meter reading. Then we generate the billing document. Then we invoice the billing document and print that. Once the printing happen, your billing process is completed. Then it will move to the collection process. Okay. Similarly, if there would be any errors, you need to go back. Like first you need to reverse the invoicing document, then reverse the billing document, then reverse the meter reading okay and then you can re-enter and correct all the details so if we put them into a data table so you can see a meter order creation happen and it moved to the database so once we get the meter reading entry it converts to bill order okay so that means when we create the meter reading order, it creates two things, billing order and meter reading order. But the billing order is not activated till we enter the meter reading. So the meter reading entry is there, then it converts to billing order. Once it is billing order, then it moves to billing process. Okay, once the billing process is done, the billing document is generated. Once the billing document generated, it will check whether the amount is correct or not. So we call that outsourcing. Okay, if the amount is not okay, you can either reverse or release. If you reverse that, it will again go back to the billing process, right? You can regenerate that billing document again. If you release that, it will go for the invoicing process. Once the invoicing process is done, then you, you can go for the printing process, right? Similarly, when you are getting the meter reading order, you have the process. If the meter reading is less or more, you need to check whether it is plausible or implausible. Now, if it is implausible, you can't do billing. So you need to make the meter reading correction. Once you did the meter reading correction, it become plausible meter reading. And then you can push that into the system for the billing process. So if we discuss what are the minimum requirements we need to do a billing, Okay, so billing can be of any types. Okay, so mostly we define the billing into periodic billing and uh, non periodic billing or interim billings. So, periodic billings which link to a period or a schedule that means like every month you are generating an invoice or bill, so that's a periodic billing process. So, on a monthly basis, if you have a key date, a period, we call it a periodic billing. And in that case, we have an exact number of days. So we know, okay, this many days, we need to do a periodic billing. Whereas, let's consider season billing. That is also a periodic billing, but it is based on the season. Why the season billing is there? Because in some cases, like in India, when the paddy season is there, the energy consumption is high, okay? Because 
people are go for the flour meals to the rice meals. So uh, the government give them subsidy to use those meals. Okay, so that's how there would be a seasonal bill for that particular period. Similarly, when there would be a month of uh, summer, in that case, the water reserve in the dams are less, the energy generation is less. So uh, the government may put some more surcharges or the regulatory board put some more surcharges for that period to consume less energy. So for that season, people understand the the energy charges are high, they can reduce that. So depending on those seasons and depending on the consumption, uh, we can generate these bills that is called uh, season-based billing. Similarly, we have best rate billing. Like I, I can give one example, best rate billing. Somebody is not at his home. Uh, probably he went for a holiday or something. And we collected the meter reading and the meter reading is coming very less. Let it be one unit or two unit. And we have a minimum stand, standing prices, which is more than the consumption bill. So should we go for the minimum standing charges or for the consumption charges? Like we know the, if we go for the consumption charges, it would be lost for the organization. So the organization always mention a minimum standing price. So whether they use or not use, they have to pay a minimum uh, bill for, it is probably um, probably for all the utilities, okay? So in that case, we pick the best rate bill, which are ever is available. So we apply that. Similarly, if you have a RTP billing, real-time pricing billing, in that case, we have prices for every hour or every 15 minutes. In Europe, it is every 15 minutes. In UK, it is every 30 minutes. So SAP provided you the facility to make your prices choice in every five minutes. Okay. Anyway, so if you find any price which is best for your company and you need to collect that price uh, for the energy, oh, yeah, yes. you can apply that price. Yes. Yes, sir. So, sir, in MDM also, I think they take a price I mean, a read at every 30 minutes or something like that. That's yes, yes, that is that is your profiling pricing. Uh, we call them real-time pricing, RTP. So, at 30 okay. minutes, the price will be, means the bill will automatically get generated. No, no, no. The bill will not, get sorry, generated. Read, read. Yes, that <clears throat> that's neat a smart meter which can capture the reading every 30 minutes yes okay sir so the benefits of if it, it captures every 30 minutes what are the as i mentioned you have prices for every 30 minutes as well so okay. what happened when <clears throat> we are buying the energy the energy cannot be stored right so we need to buy the energy so we need to buy the energy from the energy market now the energy market do bidding. So there are generators, there are suppliers. The suppliers bid for the energy. The generators put their rate there, okay? Now let's consider generator one, G1, G2, and G3. Three generators are there. And currently the market need, let it be at this hour is 10 megawatt. But all these three generators generating 555 five, five megawatts, so 15 megawatt is there, okay? And three suppliers are there, S1, S2, and S3. Now, all these three suppliers need 10 megawatt. Consider 3.3, 3.3, and 3.3, right? Now, uh, the generator put a price or rate, let it be each, uh, this, price may be of 15 minutes or 30 minutes. So the bidding, there would be a bidding duration, okay? So based on the bidding duration, they put a price. So uh, the G1 put uh, per unit five euro, G2 four euro, G3 six euro, okay? So now there are three suppliers, they need to call that. So who will pick? So the best price, which is three euro, uh, generator two, that would be sold first, right? 
So mm -hmm. supplier one pick that. So other okay. prices auto adjusted. So they will automatically come to the best rate of three, uh, uh, three euro, right? Now let's consider here where I'm giving the example, uh, the generation units are generating more energy. Let's consider the generation units are uh, generating less energy, but the suppliers want more energy. So in that case, what will happen? The bidding rate would be more. Okay, so it's all based, based on your uh, supply and demand and based on that, the comparative pricing will be done and through that the best rate need to be picked. And through that we can offer the customer what is the best rate. Okay. So that's how it is all in RTP or profile billing. Next is your back billing or period end billing. It's back billing is the billing which we are doing after the period of the consumption. And uh, we do calculation, the all the uh, average for that period, what should be the price and we apply and do the billing. Similarly, we have interim billings. Like when we do a move out, we are getting a final bill that is called interim bill. Okay, because when we do a move out, we also put the final meter reading. And with that final meter reading, we are getting an interim billing. Or in some cases, the customer request for interim billing. Yes, we go for that interim billing. Uh, in some cases, if we change the devices or we change from let it be a single register device to multiple register device, we do create the interim billing as well. Okay, so interim billing is there. It is non-periodic. It can become any time. And so uh, in between the period, we can do the interim billing. Then outsourcing for bill or validation. Now, once you generate the bill, we need to check whether the amount is correct or not. If it is uh, more than the tolerance limit, which we fixed at the configuration level, then it would be outsorted. So once it will get outsorted, as we created the rate category, we put a outsort group there. So the invoice or the bill will go to that uh, outsort group. So for, uh, for billing, we need to release or reverse. Once we release or reverse, uh, it will be go to the next step. If we release it, it will go for the invoicing. If we reverse it, so what will happen? That uh, bill document will be reversed and you can regenerate the invoice after correcting whatever you are suspecting is wrong. Then if there is any, any uh, less lack of confidence to do the billing process, we have the options of simulation. We can do the simulation, we can check everything all correct, or if there are any errors, we can find that at the simulation. Okay. Then we have a process called manual billing. Manual billing is mostly, um, we can generate this billing anytime. We don't need any meter reading order for that, but there is a T code by which we generate the billing document where we need to pass all the details manually. Okay. And, uh, but we need a contract to do a manual bill. Okay, now once we did that manual billing, we release that manual billing, then it will go for the invoicing and we can do the invoicing. So once we find any errors, what we do, we reverse. We reverse and for each of reversal, the stuff is different. Like for invoicing reversal, the T code is different. Uh, like individual invoice reversal EA13 for billing reversal, the T code is different EA20 for meter reading order reversal EL37. So we do reversal to do corrections. Okay. So as I mentioned, we have uh, periodic billing. The periodic billing may be of uh, monthly, bi monthly, quarterly, or uh, tri means three times in a year or you can say half yearly. Okay, but maximum it would be annually. Beyond that it can't. So that is the periodic billing cycle and it should be sequential in nature. If you generate a uh, periodic bill for last month, let it be October. Okay, then you can generate the 
invoice for the month of November. But if you don't, then it will not allow to do the next period billing. Similar interim billing, not bound to any schedule, can be initiated manually. Uh, and next periodic billing begins at the time of interim billing. Okay. Final billing, when we do a move out or we need to disconnect anything, we do a final billing. Okay. So and then we have uh, manual billing. Manual billing, as I mentioned, if you need to do some corrections, we go for the manual billing. So if we link this billing process with the master data, now you can understand the billing class is linked to the installation and this billing uh, installation also linked to the rate category. Rate category links to your schema, schema linked to your uh, rates and rates linked to your rate type. Now rate type and rate, they combine through the rate category. So when we do a rate determination, we pass the rate category and rate type to activate the rates. And once the rate is activated, so uh, your logic is activated for the billing process. Now, if we need some facts, okay, we are getting that facts also from the installation. At the installation level also, we put the device. So as we know, full device installation where we pass the rate type. So now this rate type we are getting from the device level or register level, or you can get this rate type as well from the fact level. Okay, and the price classes also, if there is a rental billing condition. So in that case, price class is at the device level or at the register level. Okay, and uh, we discussed the facts are of three types. At the installation level, we have a fact. At the rate category level, we have a fact. At the rate level, we have a fact. Okay, so if we see the whole scenario of the, uh, the structure, you can understand we have the installation, utility installation. Now that installation holds the rate type and rate category. The rate type we get from the devices or registers. The rate category we are getting from the installation and they combine and they do the rate determination. Once the rate determination done, the rates are activated. So rate one, two, three, four, whatever. So those rates, which are rate one, rate two activated, they holds the rate steps and rate steps hold the variant operands. Okay, so that is the whole structure. So we already discussed about the portion MRU bill order order status, which is billable or non-billable, error control, like by doing the simulation, outsourcing, that is called billing monitoring, bill reversal, which is called bill correction. So we already discussed the portions as well, scheduling as well, uh, billing order creation, bill order is there, right? So billing simulation and uh, simulation is of two types again, which is we used to uh, do the correction or like before doing the billing process, we avoid the errors, okay? So these two type of simulations called one is billing simulation and other one is general simulation. So the general simulation is don't require any billing order, whereas the billing simulation need a billing order, which should be billable in nature, okay? And in simulation, we don't need any billing period. We just do the simulation to check our rate category, rate types, all those stuff is correct or not. So we are just go for the simulation. Whereas to check the meter reading results are correct or not, whether it is going for outsourcing or what will what will be the actual result for that. So we can check at the billing order process or billing si simulation process, right? So we'll do that as well today. <clears throat> simulation process in our practicals and I'll show those details. Okay, so these questions are coming regularly where what is the difference between billings and simulation? Now, it creates billing document which are processed by the invoicing process, whereas simulation, whatever the document it creates, it will not go for the invoicing process. That is the basic difference. The billing order will be consumed 
uh, it is mentioned as deleted similar the simulation in case of simulation <clears throat> the building order will not consume it will be still there status of the meter reading result is dynamically set to build the meter reading results are not changed okay a new time slice is processed for the maintaining the data that means you can proceed for the next schedule billing process whereas the simulation you can't proceed for the next period billing process okay so you can understand here uh, we have processes for individual and we have processes for mass okay to check the errors we can process for the mass simulation where we can understand which contracts are correct which are not correct and with that we will proceeding faster okay so as i mentioned we have individual processes we have mass processes both the cases for simulation cases for the billing cases and as well as for the invoicing we have individual invoicing and mass invoicing process okay all the t codes are different as well and some of the parameters are also different now once you did the billing you can display the billing document okay once you did the invoicing process complete you can go for the printing document so in that case you can check the document as a print document so, okay okay we already discussed if the the amounts are beyond our tolerance we can the invoicing document or billing document out sorted and it will it will be checked by any person and then they can release that you can see the person is checking whether the amounts are correct or not okay and once the outsourcing released it will proceed for the invoicing process so the all the process is mentioned here in this diagram and if you need to do the corrections similar process we need to reverse everything and recorrect Let's discuss about the manual billing. Now, so what is manual billing? Manual billing, like if we missed something somewhere, okay, how we need to put that amount, how we need to adjust that amount, or how we need to do that billing. Let it be. Um, somebody told that uh, the meter consumption was 30 units in the month of January 2022, but after investigation we identify the meter consumption is 40 uh, 40 units so now that extra 10 units what you need to do should you reverse all the invoicing document from the month of october till january and update the meter reading results and regenerate the invoices or you can do that manually corrected in this month november to create a manual document put the extra adjusted amount and regenerate the billing document and post that okay so the best way to correct that manually because all those invoicing are already distributed to the customer the payment should be received by this time so there would be impact in multiple department multiple reports and multiple modules in sap so it's best to choose to do a manual correction by creating a manual billing document so when you create a manual billing document you need to put all the details like starting from the business partner contract account contact details installations and execute once you go you put the calculation as well there manual calculation so 10 units put that uh, put the prices all those stuff yes there is a option to use the existing uh, configurations you can use that as well but you can put your own calculations once you put that generate the invoicing uh, generate the billing document release that billing document for the invoices okay so that is called the uh, manual uh, billing process okay so when you do a manual billing process you need 
to be very clear about these details, which are called the basic details, like red data, quantity, line items, price data, all those stuff you have to be clear. Otherwise, what will happen? It will be not sync to your existing configuration, right? Because you need to do the invoicing as well. And once you need to do the invoicing, it need to be posted to the FICA stuff. Okay, so all this basic information you have to be very clear. And once you are clear, you can proceed with the manual billing process. Okay, and once you've completed the manual billing process, you need to release that. Once you release, it will be unlocked for the invoicing process. And finally, it will get posted. So overall, what is the understanding? The understanding is very simple. We do generate the meter reading order, we do billing and we do invoicing. So next session, what we do, we're going to do the practicals and I'll show you the details, how these things are happening from the meter reading order to invoicing process, okay? Okay, hi. Uh, so we discussed about the uh, the all the meter to cash process. So now we need to find one of the installation where we can do all these processes. So to go to the installation, the, the T code is ES32. Now let's identify one installation 262 check the billing period, whether it is available or not. Yes, all data is correct. You can see the bill order is there. Okay, now what I need to do, I need to reverse this bill order and we need to go through the whole process, what we discuss. Okay, now to reverse any bill order, what we need to do, we need to go with the T code called EL37. Okay. Now here you can pass the installation. So you can see here the billing order is pending there. I need to reverse that. So just reversing to starting from the initial. Okay, execute. So just tick mark here, reverse. So it is the process how you can reverse the um, bill order. Now you can refresh this and you can see it will be vanished, right? So now what we need to do, first step, meter reading order creation. So to create a meter reading order, the T code is EL01 for the individual meter reading, right? So go for EL01, select the installation. Now you can see there are multiple options. You can choose meter reading units. So which is linked to multiple installations. You can choose the contract. You can choose installation. Also you can choose the devices for the uh, meter reading order generation. Okay, five devices. Sometimes it happened that a single device have multiple registers, right? So in that case, you can pass a device, okay, to generate the order for each of the registers. As we discussed, we have two types of billing, periodic billing and interim billing. First, we go for the periodic billing. Now, once you choose for the periodic billing, whatever the MRU we linked for this installation, it will show you the scheduling. So this is the scheduling, which is generated for those MRUs and we'll choose one of the schedule or period, right? So the scheduling period, uh, we are going to choose is 1st of October to 30th of October, okay? So this is the first of October to end of the October. We'll choose this schedule period, click on the create order. It will generate the orders. So you can see 
one meter order and bill order created as we discussed. So simultaneously we are creating meter order and bill order. So let's check whether it is updated here or not. So you can see the meter order is created, but this order is non-billable. Why it is non-billable? Because we don't add the meter reading result. Now to enter the meter reading result, we'll go for a T code called EL28. So here again, we need to choose the installation. It's 262 meter reading type. Meter reading type again, I'm just taking for the utility company. Okay, then enter. Now you can see uh, I'll get an option to enter the meter reading. Okay, so let me put five. Okay. So when I did press enter, it's showing that the meter reading consumption is exit exceeded. That means it is implausible meter reading. So as I mentioned, once it is implausible meter reading, we can select that. We can go for the correction. Okay, here you can see the correction here. So it is showing the previous meter reading is zero, the current meter reading is five, and the meter reading difference is five. Okay, that's how it is the consumption is coming very high. Okay, so either we can put the correct meter reading here, let it be one or two, or we can estimate the meter reading. So I don't know the exact meter reading, I can go for the estimate meter reading. Okay, so the estimation is saying it is zero. Okay, that means I should not put more than zero, but I want to do a billing. So I'll try to pass some meter reading, let it be two, okay? It's still showing it is implausible, but I have to do the billing. So what I'll do, I'll select this and forcefully I'll release this, release without correction. That means it will be plausible in nature. Now it is plausible in nature, that means it is ready for billing. So if I'll save this, the meter reading is saved. So we moved here, we refresh here. Once we refresh, you can see the meter reading order converted to billing order. Now it is can be billed option. Now we can check the meter reading result here at the installation. So meter reading result is two. So 06 is the region, that means move in region. At the time of move in, we put 00 as the initial meter reading and today, we put two as the meter reading, okay? Now, once we get the meter reading updated, the next target is to create the billing document, okay? So what is the uh, T code for billing document? It's EASIBI for individual billing document. So let me create the individual billing document. T code each. E A S I B I. Pass it. So here you can see the billing document, document date, everything, posting date, everything is mentioned. I just removed the contract account and just left installation to do the billing. And I selected bill. So you can execute here. So it is showing the billing. Individual bill is terminated. Let's check the log, what, why it is get terminated. So it is saying no operand value were found operand John P. Now what is John P? John P is a price, okay? I know that when we created the uh, document, we know this is a price. So we need to allocate a price for this particular uh, operand. Now to apply that price, I'm just using the facts at the installation level. So I need to go to the change mode of the installation. Okay, and go to the facts. Here, I need to call the operand at John P. So you can see here the John P is there. And execute. 
So now I need to find the price for this. So we discussed uh, how to create the price last time. I just pass any of the price. Okay, it's showing that the price is not matching. So I need to create one price and then apply here. Okay. So I can see the class here is John. For that particular class, I need to create a price. So how to create a price? Our T code to create a price is EA89. Sorry. Let me go for that. So price, I just put that's five. Price category. I'm going with the quantity based price, price type, a standard price, and enter. Okay, I need to enter the currency. Our currency is INR here. Okay, so the price is created. Just I need to update the billing class. The billing class is John. Uh, just a minute. I need to check the billing class. So the billing class is John, only John. So I need to put that same billing class here. Okay. So price for John. And then I need to pass the quantity division. I can need to check the division. Here the division is EL. So I'll pass EL as the division. Okay. I will go with the days with 00, zero as the starting history. And validation starting date from 1st of October to uh, 31 12.9999. Quantity base would be one and the price would be let it be three. Copy and save. So this price is created now. It's two, three, five, six, seven, eight, three, zero, five. And I need to apply this price at the installation level. So here I need to go back, go to the change mode. Facts. So our price operand is John P. Apply that operand. And I need to pass the price here. Enter. Transfer. So you can see the price is applied here. Right. It's coming as zero. Okay, save. Okay, now we can go for the billing process. So I'll go to the period. Here we have the we have the bill order. Now we need to consume that bill order by doing the billing. So execute the billing process. Again, it is get terminated. Let's see what is the issue. Oh, we didn't save that price. Hmm. Hmm. 
Yeah, everything is okay for the price. Stack. Okay, so this price is applied here from the 15th of September. Okay, so it should be at like, I'll change the date from 1st of October and we'll check. So if there is any error, we, you can delete that and you can add the operand again. So to delete that, select that and delete here. Okay, then go back. Okay, I'm just saving it. Again, going back to update the facts. John P. And I'll start the date from 1st of October. Okay. I'll put that same price. Okay, now you can see as from 1st of October onwards, the price is active and the price is transfer for the billing process. Okay, just go back, save. Right, now we can go back to the billing process. Go back, go back, execute. Again, it's terminated. Let's see this time what is the error. Dot. Let's do. Everything is okay. Execute. Still, so no operand value found for operand John P. Let's see what is the error here. So the no operand value was found for John P for period from 15th September to 30th of September. And we updated that. Okay, let's check in the... Uh, change price level okay here we can change the validation period okay okay so i didn't save this okay, let me okay let me save this and check the contract details when the installation get created okay so if I'll check the order details, I can, now this is created from 1st of January, the installation. Then I'm going to check the, uh, when the contract is moving, the moving is happened from 15th of September, right? So we need to do the billing from 15th of September and it is not getting the price because I created the price from 1st of October. So what I need to do, I need to update the price, update the uh, values, and then it, is, it should work, okay? So what I'll do, I'll just delete this thing, or I'll pass the value from 15th of, okay, let me pass from 1st of September. Till, 
30th of September. Quantity would be one and price amount would be same three. Copy it. So you can see it is now available from 1st of September onwards. Okay, save it. Execute. Right, now let's go back and check whether it will work or not at the installation level. So at the installation level, again, we need to update the timeline. So the timeline is major factor when we are doing any billing or any price updates. So that need to be taken care very uh, sincerely. Okay, so what I need to do, I need to update that from 15th of uh, 15th of uh, September. So let me delete this. And again, need to update the price from 15th of September. So, okay, to, to display the invoicing document, you can use EA22, pass the billing document, and you can display the different, different documents. So then we see the data flow how the data actually flow in our master data, starting from the master data creation up to billing and invoicing. So that is the most important step that we need to understand as a consultant because through the data flow only, we can proceed uh, to do any customization, okay? So let me first go and check the data flow. Uh, First, I, I am going to the data environment where I can see this whole structure, right? So we started with the business partner. Okay, all right, so. Uh, to go to the data video, what we need to do, we need to first go through the business partner. So what is the T code to display the tables? The T code to, uh, to display the tables would be EA. Okay, let me SE11 or SE16. I'm going with SE11. Okay, now, for for business partners, the most of the tables are static with BUT, BUT. And if you put a asterisk of any of the table, you can find the related tables to that. So BUT, ADR12, ADR12, all those stuff you can find. So one of the most used table for Business partner is BUT triple zero. You can see this is the BUT triple zero. This is the general data for BP. So you can check this and display. So once you display this, you can find all the fields here, okay, which are related to that table. Okay, if you go to the content, you can see all the field details. Uh, if you want to put all the field details, you can go to the settings. Then field selection, then whatever the data you want, you can put there as the selection. Okay, execute. Automatically it will be reflect on the front screen. So if you'll execute this, you can find the business partner number, the name, all the details, whatever we created for the business partner. So in our case, what is the business partner number? It's 90042. Five. Let's check whether it is available or not. Nine zero zero four two five. Okay, execute. So we find the business partner. That means our when we created the data, our business partner is created. 
it's up to you you can explore more tables related to beauty as i mentioned there are a lot of tables to beauty once we created the business partner the next target is contact account so for contact account we have again many tables but one of the major table which we used for the contact account is fkk vkp okay let's check that table okay so just display you can see the contact account partner specific that means whatever the business partner we created we can pass that business partner here to check the contact account against that so our business partner number was 900425 so 900425 just execute so you can see from business partner you can find the contact account right now you know the contact account the contact account is 101343 okay so that is for the contact account the next is contract contract is created once we do a move in so the move in table we need to understand and for move in mostly we use ever table okay so let's go to the ever table no contract as i mentioned this is the control contract general table fkk bkp which is linked to the business partner now ever table is for your move in table okay so here you can pass the contract account number to get the contract right so what is our contract account number we get that from fkk vkp table so it is 1001343 it is 101343 one more zero actually i missed some zeros 101343 right 101343 101343 right let's check oh great so from the contract what you will get from this table you got the contract which is 201 you will get the installation number installation number is a technical number right so we are integrating technical data with uh, business master data so tmd to link to tmd we are getting a link which is 262 which is the installation and from contract account we got 101343 right so then what is the installation table to check the installation table we can proceed with a uh, table name called eanl right eanl so eanl is there from eanl you can proceed and get the premise here so our t uh, Installation is two sixty two. You can proceed here, pass this, and get the premise. Premise is two forty seven, right? So from premise table, we can get the connection object table. So for premise, we can go EBBS table. Okay, any errors? now when you don't recollect the exact table name you can search through this asterisk because through that you can identify the exact table name uh, i am looking for ebvs ev application purchase replication or uh, who's no evvs table or premise table 
I didn't able to get that, but I can get that from the installation. How to get the uh, table name? Sorry. How to get the table name from the installation? Go to place. Now, you know the premise is here. Just click here. Okay. And you can apply. What is the field? Premise is the field. Okay. You can do a F1 there. Okay. Once you did the F1 there, you have the technical data. Here you can see the, the table name. Okay. And the table name is EBPS. Okay. So you can copy here and the field name is BSTELLE. -E. Okay. Copy this. and proceed to your table. Okay, display. So you can find the premise table here. And through that, you can proceed. Uh, once you pass this table name here, you can get the uh, connection object because premise is linked to the connection object, okay? So I'll go back. I just remove the D. Okay. So EB, BS will be the table. So premise table, you can see, go to the content. And if you execute this against premise, you will get the connection object. Now you can get the connection object here. So what is the premise number of ours? We can check in our installation. So it is 247, we can pass 247 here. Okay, and you can proceed. Now you got a connection object here, okay? So to get the connection object details, we need to go to a table called iFloat table. Okay, so iFloat is the table from where we started our technical data. So iFloat is also a table in, okay. So iFloat is also a table in plant maintenance. So this is the functional table for uh, functional locations. Now you can see the functional location, whatever you pass here, it top the categories and from there you can understand whether it's a connection object or a superior functional location, all those details, right? So this is the entire table journey for the master data, what we created, okay? Now, the question arises, these master data tables are obviously not changed very frequently. So we call them master tables, okay? Or primary tables. Whereas we have transactional tables, which holds all the transactional data. So what are the transactional data? Like we created the billing and invoicing. So this data is stored into the transactional table. So to check those, we have same kind of key codes, okay? Uh, SE11 or uh, SE60, but there is another T code called SE16N, which is, much more useful if you use it correctly. N stands for numeric, so number of entries you can pass here. You can find the names and you can find the technical names in one page, right? So whatever the fields in the table, you can find all the fields here in SE16N with the field name and technical names. Okay, so let's consider, we'll take one of the uh, invoice data and check that. So the invoicing data uh, table is ERDK. Okay, this is for invoicing and execute this. So it is giving a lot of entries, okay? Now, we know we have some information with us, like we have, <clears throat> We have uh, invoicing number, we have contract account number, 
okay you can pass those things here let's pass the print document number uh, the print document number is 110 uh, sorry 9 all zeros 18 so i can copy this pass this to the table and i can get the details okay execute okay you get all the details so what is the amount all those details you can find here all right so this is the table for the invoicing similarly the task for you to find the tables for billing i can see the billing table i can show you erch okay so that much you can proceed with many tables you can explore as many tables as you can it's based on you how you are exploring okay so this is for the day so thanks for your time and probably tomorrow we'll try to discuss more about the dm device management and their table flow